There is no light without shadow, just as there is no happiness without pain. People always think I rely on JJ. Every time people mention my channel, they're like, oh, JJ made you. It was because of JJ and stuff. And I hate that so much because I am my own person. But it is only through shadows that one comes to know the light. Like, I'm just there. Every time JJ's mentioned, I'm just, I'm just like, like a speck of dust. I want to actually like cast my own shadow. Stuck in the shadow of his older brother, desperate to break free. You want to get out of my shadow? Start putting in that work. It's as simple as that. When you finally figure that out, watch your life change for the better. A journey to becoming a man. <sighs> I hate being, being seen as a bad guy. I hate it so much and I'm tired of it. I'm so tired of it. I've been taking shit for so long and I'm not doing this anymore. I'm tired of being the nice guy. Stand him and I, and I don't think I'll probably ever forgive him because inevitably he tried to ruin me. He tried to ruin me. Ruin my credibility for the worst. On a never ending quest for victory. He never gave up. It's your last fucking chance. And you did not pick an easy fight. You called me an easy fight to the public. I want to see an easy fight. I'm your last fucking chance. I used to cry myself to sleep a lot. Mm. During those times. I'm not surprised. I used to cry myself to sleep a lot. Mm. Just being like. Like. I'm just, I, I'm just like a failure, you know what I mean? Just like, like what, what's my actual purpose? Yeah. At the beginning of his journey, life was easy for Digi. He enjoyed a life of luxury gifted to him by his older brother, as he had never had to work for anything in his life. Although he had natural talent that was hidden under all his laziness, he needed humbling in life. I'll, I'll be honest, like, before the Jake Paul fight, I was a very up my ass type guy. I was like, I'm the shit, look at me, this, that, whatever. <laughs> I was, the narrative is yeah. Deji is lazy. Yes. That is the narrative. Yeah, it's true. I I am lazy. I I'm gonna I'm say, why, I'm why say I'm lazy. lazy. I'm not as lazy as I used to be, yeah, but, but why were you lazy? Because I was always handed things quite easily, if that makes sense. So like with the whole boxer thing, I grasped it I grasped it right like quickly and everything. Like, I mean Vidal Vidal yeah. himself said you were more naturally gifted yeah. than uh, JJ. Yeah, literally. So And then with YouTube, yeah. Obviously being KSI's little brother exactly. doesn't make life too hard. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, exactly. So I, I kind of essentially got things given to me. Well, you know your parents, because obviously they're a huge role yeah. uh, in, in your life. Did they ever sort of criticise that about you? All the time. <laughs> All the time, yeah. Really? They were, saying, they, were, they were always saying, you're lazy. Mm. You're lazy. All the time. A comfort zone is a beautiful place, but nothing ever grows there. The G was living a life of comfort. And where there is no struggle, there is no strength. Before this whole boxer thing, I was just doing my thing. I was just that bubbly guy, just yeah. that whatever. Yeah. Then I was like, oh, screw it. Let me do this boxing fight. Uh, like the whole build up to the boxing fight was fun as well. Mm. I didn't really take it that seriously, but obviously I was going to shit talk and everything. And, and your star was rising as yeah. well. So you were gaining a more popularity than ever. Exactly. And it was brothers versus brothers. So exactly. that was a cool angle. Yeah. The G was preparing for the most important night of his life. But still, Digi continued to remain in his comfort zone. He said we didn't support him. It was us saying he can't eat like shit food and he needs to work out. We were supporting him. We were doing what we needed to do to make sure he can win this fight. Yeah. By supporting him, sometimes it's not easy. But supporting is not always like do what you want. It's like pushing them. So Digi, stop eating all this like junk food when you have a chef downstairs working every day to make your food and then you're just throwing it away. Imagine like that's yeah. hurting her. Everything like that. Not training. 
I meant to be, meant to be doing like burpees and you do just 50s. Oh, oh, deal, let me do 50 today. Yeah. And then we'll play FIFA or something. It's like, come on. Yeah, like his, um, like JJ would always go into his room, like he'd be playing Fortnite or, yeah. or whatever. And JJ would always go in and go like, Dej, let's go. Throw boxing gloves at him and go, we're going to go spa downstairs, like technical spa. Yeah. Just do it. He's like, Oh, I can't be bothered. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, JJ is really JJ really tried. Everyone, tr- yeah, JJ tried the most, one hundred percent. But everyone was trying. Everyone was Even trying. Even Vic yeah. was like, "Deji, come on, yeah. <laughs> like, get your ass into gear." I mean, look at the fight. If yeah. Deji had trained properly for six months, if he, he did what he said. He would have won. Yeah. But I took a loss as a loss. Uh-huh. So and I let that loss get to me. Really? Yeah. How how bad are we talking? Like how how often are you thinking about something like that on a daily to weekly basis? I'll be real, I lost so I was a very confident guy. After that loss I kinda just became sheltered. Really? Honestly, I just So you didn't go out as much or? Literally. Yeah. Right. I took the loss way harder than I essentially should have. So obviously, I, I didn't take the fight seriously, and I was being essentially not not I'm gonna say clowned, but I was being not I don't want to say attacked either, but I was being told like, see, you could have been Jake if you just put put the work in. Did G had regrets after losing the Jake Paul fight? The price of discipline is always less than the pain of regret. And did you ended up taking that pain out on others? Uh, so after the Jake Paul fight, obviously I took like a three year hiatus of like just doing stuff, but I wasn't enjoying what I was doing, like the content I was making. I was doing like reaction videos and stuff. And You seemed unhappy, if I'm honest. Yeah. You, was, were, you were lashing out a lot. There was beef. You lashed out at me one point. You lashed out at like, <laughs> everyone. Like, me and Keem were getting it. KSI, uh, Randolph, like anyone who you knew, you just went for it. I don't like, I don't like JJ's cameraman. To the point that if I actually ever see JJ's cameraman, I will happily punch him in the face. I, I don't like him. I don't like him. He's, 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 I, I really don't like him. You know me, I, I can take it as a bit of fun. Yeah. But, but with other people, like, there was a diss track where you said to Randolph, your wedding was shit and I'm going to fuck your wife like a horse. Yeah, oh my God. Yeah. You're calling your brother out for abortions. You say, you always say you made me. Uh oh. You always say I'm lazy, but I'm here on my grind. While you're just killing babies. <laughs> is, he, you're, is he murdering infants? No, so Whoa. uh that's wow. I'm on about abortion. It was, it was <laughs> wild. Like you were you were the type of person at that point. People must have around yeah. you have been like, this guy, we don't I don't even want to be involved exactly. in him. He's so toxic. Neji, you've taken this way, way, way too seriously. The bit that pissed me off though is my wife. Like, <laughs> why do you have to bring her into it? Like, what has she done for you to say that? That whole Angry phase. Angry phase. I feel that that was the, me letting the internet get to me. Randolph, you are literally, you are the side men as well as JJ's bitch. You are literally their bitch. You're JJ's cameraman. He pays your salary. I mean, you spend more time with JJ than you do your own wife. You spend more time in the side men house than you do in your own house. So I was, I was very unhappy because like all the content I was making, I essentially like my viewership dropped. Everything was just going downhill. And yeah, I, I remember I, the the subs were going down. Yeah, well, exactly. Right? My subs were going down. I was getting to you. Yeah, everything was getting to me because I was kind of just like being, oh, okay, I'm kind of just fading away off the internet. Did you turned all his friends into enemies? But no one would know he would declare war. on his own brother. Did you turn his anger from Randolph towards his brother KSI? The whole public thing that we had should not have been public. It shouldn't have... I... I, I was like an extremist. You were uncontrollable. Because the fact that JJ could allow such a thing, that's why I wasn't cool with him. And that's why it's gonna be very hard for him to get back into my life. Uh, it's kind of like 
yeah like you were kind of bipolar like very hard to yeah. be pinned down and he was trying to regulate a situation exactly and you were like no don't control me yeah literally it must have been very frustrating for him but that's that was me letting the internet get to me mm. again you dramatic fuck you are so dramatic it pisses me off you insecure fucking prick i honestly can't stand you you're on you you that your brain, your brain doesn't fucking work. It is pretty rough. And and unfortunately, that probably had you all in a bad state of mind yeah. for a, a good relationship with your big bro. I'm just done with him now. Is it, is it literally like... Yep, yep. I don't care. I've unfollowed him. I, you know, I don't care anymore. But he's he's laid his bed now. He can rest in it. What was there ever... I don't know, jealousy or inferiority feelings or did you ever get annoyed that people seen you as in, in his shadow or did, was that ever the driving force behind the issues or? So I was I was never jealous, but I was pissed off that my efforts were being overshadowed, if that made sense. Yeah, like, you didn't want to take away his success. Yeah, exactly. Or you just wanted to be recognised. Yeah, literally. So, because... I, I was doing my own thing, but then people would, well, I mean, people still do it now, they compare. I don't, like, so, like again, before the Jake Paul, I had really, like, thick skin. My, my skin kind of just, kind of just like, what? Your armor went. Yeah, literally. And then, um, yeah. I hate being, being seen as a bad guy. I hate it so much. And I'm tired of it. I'm so tired of it. I've been taking shit for so long and I'm not doing this anymore. I'm tired of being the nice guy. And and obviously look, your uh, your big Christmas fallout was biblical. It was Christmas and I told him to leave my house. Not my house, our house. Yeah. It was such a weird time on YouTube that to see two guys who are mega popular yeah. going at each other on Christmas. But what was going through your head towards him? Because it felt like Bridges were burnt at that point. So I I had just come back from LA. Mm -hmm. Obviously I did that stupid diss track that I did on him. But yeah. You never really enlisted like guys he had beef with. Like was it yeah. like, Jax? Jax? Uh it was Dax, Dax, Dax and Crypt. Yeah. And yeah. Jello as well. Yeah. So uh yeah, I um did that that stupid diss track. And uh, what was the thinking in that moment of doing that diss track? What, why, 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 why take it to another level? I was just angry. Oh, I, I was, I was just. There, there were a lot of things right now. I, like I've kind of erased a lot of it from mm. my head, but I was, it was just pure anger. Mm. Just pure, just anger. I, I just, it's, oh. It is hard for him being in JJ Shadow the way he is. Yeah. Because it's like a gift and a curse, really. I don't think he would have ever been as big as he is without JJ. But. I don't think he can ever, I don't think he can accept that he is JJ's brother. Like, right. so whatever he does, he'll always be known as JJ's little brother, which does suck. Mm. Which does suck, for sure. After settling things with his brother, Deji was back on his quest for redemption in boxing. But redemption is not for the faint of heart. It takes courage and commitment. But it seemed Deji never learned his lesson. And then uh, the Vinny Hacker fight came uh, came around, but obviously, <laughs> obviously I took the piss again. Yeah, we were in Cancun for uh, what do you call it? Because of the whole COVID thing, we had to isolate. Yeah, isolate, yeah. Okay. And then um, we didn't really train. The training. Why not? I, I don't know. So I would train. Were they your boxing coaches? Yes. So the training that I would only really do was uh, so we had a basketball court <coughs> in the sun. I would just run the lengths that's all I'll do so my main goal at the time was I was weighing like 98 kg so Fucking hell. I had to come down to a minimum of like 93 like to be okay and I was just running the lengths only drinking green juice and like one slice of pineapple mm -hmm. so you can imagine I was drained for that fight or in itself so yeah, I, weak, weak yeah, kitten, yeah yeah literally so yeah. What about the boxing side of it? Were they training you? Oh no! So I was uh, I was doing pads with them every now and then, but that's it. The Vinny, was was the Vinny Hacker fight a, a rock bottom moment? Honestly, yes. I 100% I believe so. Yeah, I, I was going in there. I mean, you saw how I looked. I looked terrible. Mm -hmm. I uh, my game plan was just to knock him out first round. Yeah, I did feel that way. And uh, just and I mean, you did put it on him. To be fair, yeah, you, you were you were actually throwing a lot in that first round. <laughs> 
go, let's just get in, into the Vinny Hacker fight a minute. Yeah. Like, if you could take yourself back, imagine mm. those rounds. First round's over. How tired were you to, in order to need to take that break? And, you know, everyone made a fun of the taking the knee and all that. But you, yeah. were you... Was oh, it, yeah. I was, I was tired. Really? Yeah. No, halfway through the second round, I was like, jeez, I, I can't do it anymore. Really? Literally. I was kind of just forcing myself at that point to just... That's why I was getting clipped. Yeah. I was getting clipped. Because the guy, I mean, Vinny, no disrespect to him. I, I rate for a pretty boy, you can fight. Yeah. But he ain't on your level. Yeah. And you let him win that fight. Yeah. And that must be like fucking annoying because... Yeah, of course. I yeah. mean, sometimes you have to hit rock bottom before you can actually make your way back up though. Yeah. And, and, and that is the only positive I assume you take from that whole experience mm. is like, never again. <laughs> what was it like in the aftermath when... Obviously, we th we th you probably felt like a, the Jake Paul moment felt like a low, but that that probably wasn't as bad as what the Vinnie Hacker fight felt. What was it like living through the memes and the jokes and all the bullshit? Now, this is going to kind of surprise you. So after that loss, after JJ's video and everything, I was kind of like, okay. I felt like, I feel like that's some sort of a lack of respect for you. Yeah. You didn't respect yourself enough. Honestly. At that point, your opinion of yourself. Yeah. I don't want to say depression, but the, yeah. it, it's not that far away from feeling depressed, that, isn't it? When yeah. you just, the self-worth mm. isn't quite there. Mm. Because that guy who was flying at the start of his YouTube journey is almost a, a, a memory. You know what? I've actually never admitted this to it uh, any time, but... So, oh, this is mad. I used to cry myself to sleep a lot mm. during those times. I'm not surprised. I used to cry myself to sleep a lot. Mm. Just being like... Like... I'm, I, I'm just like a failure, you know what I mean? Just like, like, what, what's my actual purpose? Yeah. I was even doing some stupid stuff, like oh. uh, I would, I would be spending stupid amounts of money mm. just to kind of cope with things. It was the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. G was far from giving up. But it seemed no matter how much he tried. Losing was his fate. Yeah. It was like towards the Alex Wasabi fight, something changed maybe? I'm trying to think. Cause, yeah. Cause you, got, you, were in, you, you were in much better shape for that yeah. fight. You were in a better direction. What 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 was the turning point? Was there a turning point or not? No, there was a turning point. So uh, I got myself a PT, Kyle, Kyle Sullivan. Okay. Because so, uh, I told him, uh, help me. Yeah. Coming into the Alex Wasabi fight, you're obviously in better shape. Yeah. A lot of pressure on. Mm. Didn't really pull the trigger on the night. And I, I remember yeah. I was watching it. I was watching it right at that computer there, mm. and I was I was pissed off. Yeah. Uh, because I could see that you had the skills to compete with him mm. and at the end I was like fucking shit <laughs> like, I, was, I was genuinely frustrated you yeah. know what I mean and, and I, I guess some people may have been the same around you afterwards because I felt like you didn't learn the lesson at that time obviously later you obviously did but you were like oh I did great everything was great and, yeah. and then JJ and many other people were like but you didn't fight like you didn't pull the trigger there's a, there's a theme with uh, my first three fights my mental was not like right if that makes sense mm. so for the jake fight i was coming in there being like oh wow this is actually happening no way i was kind of just fighting off instinct <laughs> second fight I, I didn't even my brain wasn't there i wasn't even thinking like i if you i couldn't even remember what was going on it was it was very weird wow and then with this third fight i uh I don't think I've admitted this either. So before it, the guns were sobby. Yeah, I um, I called my mum and I was just bursting into tears. Mm. And the thing is, the reason why I bursted into tears is because I, I kind of just knew, not, like it wasn't right. Like um, mm. the call with your mother. Yeah. Can you remember what you said to her and what she said to you? Yeah. I called her and I was like, I can't do this. And she said, I can't do this. I was just crying on the phone. I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And she started crying back too because I was crying. And then obviously my mum's religious. She started praying for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then um, this, is, this is a weird one. While she's praying, I was shadow boxing just to kind of like mm -hmm. psych myself. 
use uh, cool myself yeah use a, yeah cool myself down mm -hmm. as well as psych myself up being like you can do this come on deji and every and everything and then essentially it did help mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then when it comes to my ring walk uh, of the alex wasabi do you know that feeling when you can just cry mm -hmm. i got that feeling again i was like i was like whoa mm. like what am i doing here mm. I was, I was like, I didn't want to be here, literally. He is all about shortcuts. He uh, does the minimum. Like I know his nickname is The Tank, but in my head, his nickname is The Minimum. That's, his, that's what he does. His whole life is a shortcut. And if it wasn't for his brother KSI, well, Deji wouldn't have anything. Boys make mistakes, but it takes a man to admit it, stand through it, and learn from it. Everyone had given up on Deji. But when the world turns its back on you, you turn your back on the world. It felt like the Fuzzy week, so calm. <laughs> I was there watching you guys talk. And Fuzzy, Fuzzy's very uh, full on, mm. you know? And I can imagine a little bit intimidating for people who are about to fight him mm. when he's got that look in his eyes and he is like you fuck up picking me and he's there with his washboard abs like acting like I'm, I'm ready for you you know he's ready as mm. in fight ready but you were just like okay mm. it was a total different vibe mm. I was like wow Deji like feels so much more grown up the way you were talking to people it was like you matured a lot mm why the change in attitude energy maturity that's what losses do mm. honestly like uh, i was just losing all the time so a mistake that makes you humble is better than an achievement that makes you arrogant and through losing Digi had become humbled those three losses really like brought me down to earth being like what are you doing like wow this that whatever and i'm so, I, honestly i'm happy for those losses i needed those losses yeah uh, we have that in life, don't we? It's not just mm. in the ring, but like, yeah, something's being humbled. It's painful, but mm. it's fucking necessary to yeah. make you a better version of you. Because I mean, I was a dickhead. Let's be real. I'm, We've all been there. I was a yeah. dick. So, because the people who actually cared about me, I kind of just threw them away. Whereas the Deji before Fuzzy, yeah, the ego wasn't there because mm. when he's going at you, you didn't even feel the need to respond. You were like, it's all good. Mm. Like. The total different attitude. In life, winning and losing will both happen. What is never acceptable is quitting. And did you no matter how bad things got, never quit. And from not quitting, he finally got what he always wanted. He's taken some licks here. Indeed he has. Oh, straight left, right between the guards. We got a bloody nose now for Fusi. Oh, and he The referee. Gotta give a standing eight. Fusi is bleeding from out all over here, but he is still ready to roll. He won't quit. That's the thing about Fusi, he will not quit. Here we go. Let's see if Deji can get his first professional win and his first pro KO. Fusi started in the pocket, still throwing. And they're going to put